Hi, and welcome to Experience Week. We are excited to have you with us today. This presentation is the Patagonia Playbook for CX Success by Ellen Needham. Before we jump into content, some quick housekeeping items. First, feel free to share this event with your colleagues. It's not too late to register. Second, let others know you're watching by tweeting at Qualtrics with hashtag Experience Week. And finally, all content from today is available on demand. Enjoy. The time is now yours, Ellen. Great. Thanks so much. And it's really nice to be able to chat with, with you all. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. And I'm really excited to be able to share with you all about, our, um, about how Patagonia has evolved our customer experience program. But before I jump into how Patagonia's customer experience program has evolved, um, I'd like to share with you a little bit about our background as a company. Patagonia was founded um, in the late 1950s by Yvonne and Melinda Chenard, and we originally actually started as a maker of, kind of hard goods for climbing, so, you know, pitons, um, carabiners, material that you would use, uh, equipment that you would use to, to climb, and in fact only moved into clothing, um, you know, a couple years later. But from our founding, our mission has really been threefold. It's been about the intersection of business, environment, and product. And so our mission, which is on the screen there, is something that you know, guides us to this day and I think is also relevant for how we've crafted and deployed our customer experience program. Now Patagonia makes clothing that um, is primarily for outdoor use. Uh, we started making clothing in 1972, and hopefully many of you have seen or even wear some of our products today. Um, our business has really grown to include both technical products for you know, very um, intense and um, incredible outdoor experiences, to include casual and athleisure products as well. And from a sales perspective, uh, we have several different channels that really have an impact on how we've designed our customer experience program. Uh, we have our own direct business, which would include Patagonia.com, our website, as well as our own retail stores, of which we have about 30 in North America. And we also have a strong wholesale business, which would be, include large wholesalers like Dick's Sporting Goods and REI, um, as well as smaller, you know, your local uh, mom-and-pop ski shop or, or, or local outdoor store. And our sales and business has really grown. You know, we're, we're nearly a billion dollars in sales, um, and we have global sales all over the, the world, including big businesses in Japan, uh, the EU, uh, and uh, Australia and New Zealand. So as I was reflecting on Patagonia's customer experience journey and our growth, you know, we, we, we launched customer experience about two years ago in, in a formal way. Um, I would definitely argue that customer experience has been an important part of Patagonia since our founding. Um, but in terms of how we would think about it, you know, reaching out to customers, providing those uh, easy ways for them to connect with us and talk to us, that really started about two years ago. And, I was, and as I was thinking about that journey, I think there were several things, some intentional and, and some we learned through the process, uh, that helped us to be successful and that I would recommend other companies think about as they're trying to grow their program. The first thing um, that we'll talk about that I'll share is, is building an identity and how we you know, both were able to you know, ultimately secure funding to start a formal customer experience program, but also how we, how we talked about the value that would bring to the company. Next, I think what helped us to be successful was to finding a, fee finding a feedback vacuum, uh, finding a place where there was a real lack of feedback that would be very useful and helpful to those teams and how we went about finding that and, and using that to, um, to grow the program. Next, spreading the message, you know, communicating and using initial successes and wins to be able to grow um, and share to both internally and externally the support that we can provide and, and how listening to customers is, is easy and is something that, that our team, the customer experience and omni-channel team could support. I think a lot, a lot of our success came from also being opportunistic. You know, we had a plan and, and had a way that we thought the program would roll out, but I think some of the opportunities that 
ultimately helped us to expand and grow our program the most were, were ones that we didn't anticipate. And finally, iterating. Yeah, I, I think that customer experience as a field is really growing. There's you know, new, new tools, new ideas, um, new ways that companies are implementing it every, every year. Uh, and I think recognizing how our CX program is very much living and breathing um, and not static is, has been important for us as we think about the future. So let's jump in. So the first step, I think, is, is building that internal identity. Who, who are you as a customer experience program, and what value can you offer to the company? And how does that relate to the company's mission and, and key priorities and focus areas and so on? I also think this is important because for those of us who have to, you know, go from not having a formalized program to trying to implement one, you know, we have to ask for money. We, we have to find the, the budget to, to be able to take on new tools or, or people or whatever that might look like. And so kind of coming up with a story and a narrative I think is important. And there's a lot of different ways we can build that high-level vision. That could be through using resources, you know, external reports and benchmarking, connecting with other companies. Um, building a roadmap that, you know, is kind of glazed out for the next year, what, ha you know, what we're going to be doing and how that's going to be relevant. I like to think about starting this with a question that I often will ask myself and, you know, will ask other stakeholders as well, which is, you know, thinking, boiling down customer experience very, very basically. What do we, what do we want to learn from our customers? If we could ask them anything, what would it be? And I think importantly, adding on to that, how would we use that information? I think that you know, people's excitement about customer experience can fall into a couple different camps. You may find some people who are really stoked about the idea of listening to customers, but just perhaps don't know exactly how to go about it. Um, you may find folks who don't understand the value of it or don't feel like it's as relevant. In all of those cases, in any of those cases, I think it's important to generate that excitement by opening up the, the realm of possibility of what we can learn about, while also making sure we tie it back to a useful outcome. And so for Patagonia, the um, way that I think about this and sort of what I would consider our customer experience mission statement, if you will, is that my team and, and myself, we aim to facilitate conversations with customers to both gather information, turn that into insight, and then ultimately drive an action that will improve customer experience and loyalty. Uh, and I think those three parts of that statement are important for, for me in, in, in Patagonia, but I think important for people more broadly. The first step is, is gathering information. And maybe, in some cases, you might be drowning in information, right? You might have a ton of data out there. Or maybe not. Maybe it's, maybe it's that there's a lack of, of clear communication. For us, it was, it was the, the latter. You know, we, we would get one-off communications and contacts, but we didn't have sort of a formalized system, at least from a, from a experience, you know, a, a web experience, a store experience perspective of gathering that. So that was the first step, just turning on the faucet. But I think that can quickly, you know, quickly transform folks to say, okay, great, now I have all this information, but what do I do with that? And for me, I feel like the value that our program brings is, is distilling down that information into something that's useful and that ultimately is related to a specific action. That could be a business decision. It could be, a, you know, helping to inform the strategic direction of, you know, a particular sales channel, like whatever it might be. Um, and that you can get a lot of enthusiasm around, asking customers questions, and then it's our job um, in the customer experience world to make sure that we're respecting those customers' time and that we're making sure the questions we're asking are ultimately leading to a decision. I think it's also important to think about your identity in the context of your company. You know, this is a quote on the screen from Yvon Chouinard, our, our founder, who talks about more broadly how Patagonia thinks about profit, which is basically that you know, the company will be successful financially when everything else is working right. You know, when we make sure that we provide the best customer service, when we make sure that it's easy for people to use our online tools, um, when we build the best product and, and feel like we have the best product out there in the market. And so from a VOC perspective or a customer experience perspective, 
I like to think about in terms of selling our, our, our program that our revenue comes from when everything else is going right with our customer experience and that we're understanding all those other elements of experience and measuring them. So we have an engaged customer base. They're having really easy con- um, conversations or interactions with us that are emotionally connected, that are relevant to them, and that they feel like they're a part of the Patagonia brand and the Patagonia story. So I think once you, you know you, we have it, we have a narrative, a sort of why why we exist. The next important step is to, I believe, is to start to drive towards action. You know, have some sort of outcome, some sort of, of quick win that we can we can um, talk about and, and, and use. And so the I think I refer to this as a feedback vacuum, as a place where there's no, you know, you, there's a real there's a real lack of information that would be particularly relevant. In some ways that I think that we can identify some of those gaps or vacuums are and, and picking the right one are as included. Uh, number one, finding people who are willing and eager to work with us. Most of our customer experience teams aren't, aren't huge. You know, we don't have tons and tons of resources available. So we have to be smart about who we're partnering with and making sure that we're picking a location that we're going to work in that, you know, the people there that we can, we can rely on and that are excited about the idea. I also think it's important to think about a location that reflects our brand. You know, who are you as a company and where would it be most important to make sure that the, you know, the promise that you're making to your customers is being realized? You know, aligning with senior leaders' excitement and, all, and broader company priorities is, is always a plus, right? If we can make sure that there's, there are areas that we know that are growing for us um, or that we have um, more opportunity to, to identify how can we support from an experience perspective there. Ideally, going back to finding somebody who is willing and eager to work with us, also looking for places that can be self-sustaining, that you know, we can set up, monitor, support, but that they can really take on a life of their own and then ultimately will be impossible to stop if they're successful. So at Patagonia, we ended up launching and building our customer experience program by starting with our, our retail stores. And we launched a, a retail post-transaction survey. So we would reach out to customers who had been in a store and, and made a purchase or a return or, or submitted a repair. And we would ask them about their experience. And I think this really fits all of these principles pretty well. You know, we had a group of people who are connecting with customers every day. But oftentimes, you know, the, the formal feedback they would get would either be when a situation was really good or really bad, um, and that would often come through as an email to customer service or potentially a call, um, but there wasn't a great way to aggregate, uh, the, you know, the broader uh, customer feedback. And so we had this, we had this gap. Um, we had a group of store managers and, and operations team members who were super excited about a way to make that easier to understand. Um, and, and in Patagonia, retail is a imp- really important reflection of our brand. We, you know, we really value that direct relationship with customers, and we really value the local uh, you know, markets and neighborhoods that our stores are in and, and celebrate those. Retail and our retail growth is also a place that is a company priority. Um, and while it's just hard to tell at the beginning, having, set, having been through um, our retail uh, customer experience work now about, for about 18 months, if we took it away, it would definitely cause a mutiny. So that's always a good sign. And so for Patagonia, what this looks like is, you know, a, an, an email survey that we reach out, that we try to brand, we try to make it personal. You can see um, the image that we're um, in, the, in the screen, or excuse me, in the screenshot there is actually of the front of our Boston store. And so a Boston customer very soon will start to receive emails that are looking at and feeling like not just Patagonia, but by the, the specific Patagonia store that they went to. We then try to make it simple for our retail managers to manage that relationship by giving them automatic alerts, um, giving them an easy way to, to close the loop, to, to reach back out to customers through integrating with Salesforce and using, and using Salesforce's case management capabilities. 
um, and ultimately sharing the, sharing the excitement and the knowledge throughout the company. So the, the quote that you see there, to give a little bit of an explanation, uh, the Ironclad Guarantee is something that Patagonia um, offers. It's sort of our, it's our warranty. And we offer to repair, replace the, any garment that, uh, that a customer has that they're not satisfied with over the live, kind of the lifetime of that garment. And so the, the customer in this quote is, is referring to our Ironclad Guarantee when he says, Ironclad Guarantee, how about Ironclad Customer? Uh, and, you know, we, we, we love this response. I, I get these alerts, too, and so I, I'll read them um, and read the customer feedback. In this particular instance, actually, I forwarded along to our sales leadership, and the, and the head of our global sales actually reached out to this customer to thank them for their feedback. So I think it's, you know, finding that feedback vacuum is, is both about streamlining and operationalizing and making that process really simple for your front line. I think it's also about the stories like this customer and about sharing those and celebrating them more broadly. So once we've taken, you know, we've had it, we've had a win or we've been able to implement a part of our customer experience program, how do we grow that? I think there's been two messages that have been particularly successful and that have resonated inside the company as I've tried to grow and spread our customer experience program. The first is that my team, that customer experience, we're going to take the guesswork out of how to do customer experience. We're going to make it super easy and simple for you as an internal stakeholder to capture information about your customers and that we can respond quickly. And so we are relevant to business units that work very quickly because we can support the speed at which you work. And so to give you an example of that second, uh, second message there, so the, uh, the, our customer experience survey in retail was something that we had already we had set up. And so we started to think, how can we use this Better. You know, how can we take advantage of this already ongoing system that we have to meet other needs as they might arise? Some of you may remember that last Black Friday, uh, Patagonia did a 100% for the Planet campaign where we committed to donating 100% of our sales that day to grassroots environmental nonprofits. This decision to move forward with a Black Friday campaign was not something that we had been thinking about and planning for, for six months. Uh, we made that decision fairly quickly, um, you know, with a, within a pretty short time frame from a marketing perspective. And so our team is pulling together, you know, the collateral and the messaging and the operations. How is it going to work? What are we going to, how are we going to train our store managers? And as a part of that, you know, the team was curious how do we measure the impact of this campaign on customers? You know, how, what do customers think about it? How important is it for, how important was this campaign in driving their behavior? And so you can use traditional analytics like, you know, uh, conversion rates or new visitors versus return visitors on the website, uh, traffic and overall sales in a store, but what that doesn't tell us is the, is the why, is the motivation behind those customers. And so because we already had this retail survey in place and because retail was, a big, was going to have a big presence for this day, we decided, well, why don't we just add a couple questions to an already existing process and make it super simple for us to get that information. And so we were able to respond and partner with our, with our retail marketing team and, and give them insights about what retail customers were coming in. And we found that nearly every single person who came in was aware of our 100% for the Planet campaign, so that was a win. But we also found out that many fewer customers were aware of Patagonia's ongoing 1% for the Planet giving campaign, where we give 1% of our sales annually. And so we saw that as a real opportunity, like, oh, you know, clearly we made, you know, a big impact on this one day, and we can do a better job of sharing and communicating all of our ongoing efforts. We were also able to share just the level of impact that this campaign had on people's purchasing behaviors. So 
you know, the, the number of folks who were came, just simply came into the store because of the campaign or purchased more because of the campaign. Um, and so that was really relevant and useful information to be able to provide in a timely manner that I think, you know, being able to, being able to say as a VOC or as a customer experience team, hey, we can respond quickly with you um, is an incredible way to grow uh, your program. Once we've, you know, built some internal momentum, I think some of the most successful ways that our Patagonia Customer Experience Program has grown has by being a willing and open partner without potentially knowing exactly where it was going to go uh, and where a particular project or, you know, research um, initiative was going to lead us. And so we've been opportunistic um, in, in several different ways. And, and as I was reflecting about it, I think it really comes down to three different types of opportunities. Solving a problem, aligning with a, a mission critical topic, or supporting a high priority launch. So let me give you an example of each of these. When we think about solving an important problem, uh, about a year ago, our product team started to hear a lot of, or more, I should say, more feedback from our customers um, who were leaving product reviews about dissatisfaction with a couple different elements of our a fit of our better sweater. And better sweater is, the, is the, Im the product image you'll see there. And so the product team started to hear this. They're, you know, they're hearing, okay, they're, I'm hearing stuff about sleeve length. I'm hearing different pieces of feedback. And really wanted to get a sense of the scope of that problem. You know, it, it, product reviews are great, and they're really helpful, and, and our product team reads them um, and uses them in, in, their, in their work. But they're also, you know, a pretty selected and small sample size. And so they realized, hey, we want to have a better understanding of this before we start to jump to conclusions or, or jump to solutions. And so we were able to partner with the product team um, with customer experience to do a more in-depth survey to understand what is really happening with fit here. And, and let's look at products from a couple different seasons. Let's look at different colors, different styles, and get an understanding of, you know, is sleeve length a, a problem? Um, are there other things here that are causing customers to be particularly happy or, or particularly unhappy with the product? And so that kind of analysis was something that the, the, our product team before didn't really have access to. You know, they could work with our quality team to go and do spot checks and pull product and, and you know, measure and see if it was within our tolerances and, and so on. But they didn't have that customer feedback coming in to help inform what is it exactly that is working with this product and what's not. And so by, you know, be, by being able to work with that team and, help them to understand, in, in this case, we found that there, in fact, wasn't a problem with the fit, um, that the same number of people, not the same, but that there was uh, about 3% of customers who thought a, the sleeve was too long and about 3% who thought it was too short. So that was helpful for us, and, it, you know, and 3% is a pretty small margin of error when, when all else is considered, particularly because anyone who works in retail knows fit is one of the hardest things to get right. And so that was really reassuring and really gave the team confidence to, you know, be able to understand the, whether they should act or not. Aligning with the mission critical topic, you know, this might not be something that has a, a giant revenue impact or a, um, or a particularly flashy um, launch, but it's something that's really important to the company and who you are. And, and like I mentioned before, with Patagonia, our environmental mission is something that's incredibly important to, to our company. So the, the image on the screen you see now is of our Footprint Chronicles. Uh, the Footprint Chronicles was launched um, almost 10 years ago now with the mission of making Patagonia's supply chain radically transparent, letting customers understand who had, you know, had purchased a better sweater, for example, know where the textile mill was, where the fabric came from, and the trims, where the factory, where all of that was put together is, and then finally how it got to the United States. And this was at the time, you know, and still is to this day, a really um, 
you know, a really non uncommon thing for for retailers to share to open up their their supply chain like that. Although it's becoming more common, which is which is fantastic. And so last year, the environmental team approached and said, "Hey, we're thinking about what does Footprint Chronicles 2.0 look like? You know, what is what does radical transparency mean to customers today, different than it did many years ago, and how can we?" build and create a, 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 you know, a web presence or a, something that will allow us to continue to lead the charge on communicating our supply chain and communicating who we are as a company and what we're trying to do to improve that. Um, and, and this is another situation where you, know, you can get some really good data from web analytics, right? You can look and see what types of subjects, um, you know, what kind of environmental topic areas are customers clicking on the most or spending the most time on? How are they engaging with this map? Where are they coming to the map from? Are they coming from our product pages? Are they coming from external websites? And you can get a lot of really good information, but again, what you miss is that why. It's the, you know, why are they engaging with us in this way? And what are the opportunities to grow? And so through working with that team, we're able to provide them with some really rich customer feedback about what they, how they used the Footprint Chronicles, what they thought about it, how it related to their purchasing decision making, um, and other information that really can help, would help, help them to inform and is helping them to inform the relaunch of that. And then finally, supporting a high priority launch. So just about a month ago now, Patagonia launched Warnware.com, which is a online presence for customers to be able to go and purchase gently used Patagonia clothing at a discount. Um, that has been, you know, certified and uh, you know, identified by Patagonia. And so this is a really important mission of Patagonia and a really natural extension of our warm wear program, which encourages customers to repair their garments and reuse them instead of purchasing new ones and really helps to communicate the value of keeping garments in use and the impact that has, the impact that defers on our environment. So it's, it's you know, keeping a garment in use is, has an incredible environmental impact because you're just basically not buying something new. And so the natural extension of the work that we had done for many years around educating customers about repairs and going on tour and, you know, uh, repairing garments across the, the country led us to launch this website. And one of the key questions that, of the launching of the website, you know, this is something that's new for Patagonia. It's new for, um, for us as a company and, and really pretty new in the industry. And so as a result, we didn't really know how customers would want to engage with this website. We, we weren't sure what the, what the demand was going to be like. Um, we have a, we, you know, we only had a certain supply. We only have a certain supply of, of these gently used garments. And so we were trying to understand what kind of, of basically a buying process would a customer be the most interested in. And so our, our customer experience group was able to support this business unit in this launch by setting up customer interviews and talking uh, customers to them specifically about what they've liked about Warnware when they purchased it in the past and, and how that might translate to a web experience. And so that kind of work can be done in parallel with usability testing and A-B testing and all these other really great kind of web tools we have for experience, but it provides us more context and, and really kind of, you know, passionate and shareable stories to be able to uh, explain why we're, we're making a certain business decision the way we are. So all of these opportunities were things that you know I didn't have on my customer experience roadmap. These were you know by sharing that story by the by the success that we had generated in a very kind of structured retail world, uh, we were able to start to support other business units. And by being opportunistic, that our, that you know the product work we did with with the Better Sweater has now led to four, three or four studies on various products over the last year. Um, our work with the Footprint Chronicles is very much, I think, related to our black, being able to support for Black Friday and that environmental goal. And so 
being opportunistic, you know, is not only like a nice thing to do as a, as a business partner, but also something that I think can lead us to grow our program into directions that we may not have anticipated. So finally, expanding and iterating. I think there are three really important things for us, particularly for people who are leading customer experience programs, to be always thinking about. The first is measuring our impact. You know, we have to sell our work, and, and to be able to do that, we have to be able to say what specifically we drove. How did customer experience fill a void that wasn't there, that was there, that's not there anymore? And I think about, measure, about impact in four different segments. The first one that we're, you know, is the easiest to find, not the easiest, is the easiest to talk about, sometimes the hardest to find, is, is direct revenue generating insights. So, you know, we were able to provide a piece of information that made us, the, made, we made a decision as a result of that directly related to dollars. These are the ones that, you know, we, we use to justify, hey, we, we know we want to spend a little bit more on our platform or, or whatnot, and those are really important. But I think it's also important not to forget about the other ways that we offer value that sometimes aren't as easily tied to dollars. Um, so the second would be cost avoidance opportunities. And I would put the better sweater example we just talked about in that bucket. You know, it's hard to be able to say specifically, was there a revenue impact? But certainly, if we would not have had that analysis, we would have, the, the company would have wanted to do a lot more quality um, production, pulling, in, you know, pulling inventory, um, potentially having to make a call about what to do with that product. Um, without without having an, a complete information. So from that perspective, we help to avoid costs um, and that we did not have to incur. I also think it's important to articulate when we've supported important decisions. You know, warnware.com could be an example of that. It's hard to say exactly what the dollars will be, but by, by being able to help inform um, the business model of that of that website, you know, that's a pretty significant way that, that we can support um, our stakeholders. And I think finally, we, we, the more we can share and, and, and humanize the work that we're doing, which is talking to customers, so it should be an incredibly connected uh, thing for us, is talking about that individual level of customer experience and the improvements we've made there. And this is where case studies and stories and quotes like the one I put on the screen earlier can help to bring color and, and really, you know, emotion to um, potentially very analytical discussions or decisions. Once we've measured our impact, then we have to document it. I really, I really view our, our, self, our, our team as internal consultants. You know, we have to sell our work. We have to be thinking about what's the result. Did it have an impact or not? If not, let's learn from it. If yes, let's talk about it and share it. Um, and investing the time and documenting it, I think, is just incredibly important, not only because, you know, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've built a couple slides and thought, ah, oh, you know, I'm not sure if these are ever going to come into use, and then have pulled them out, you know, whatever, two months later, six months later, um, a year later, to, you know, to be able to help pr prove a point or, or tell a story. But I think also it's important to do that because then we get to own the story. We get to tell the narrative of what customer experience looks like at our companies, and, and I think we should be empowered to do that. And then finally, like we talked about very early in the chat, we, just being comfortable with revising our strategy. You, you know, taking advantage of those new opportunities has, for, at Patagonia has grown our program in ways that I could not have anticipated. I also think it's important for us to look for organizational shifts. You know, if, if there's a new, you know, head of marketing and they have a particular background, okay, maybe they have a perspective on customer experience and what is that and how can we support or maybe we're realigning how we're thinking about product at the company. And so we can provide insight from customers about what they like and how they think about how our product works together. And then finally, revising by just getting out in front of customers. I don't think anything can beat having a conversation with a customer, um, whether it be in a store, you know, by calling them up, reaching out, talking to a vendor, um, to make sure that we're staying aware of, of where they're at. 
So with that, thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and I, you know, I wish you all the best of luck as you continue to grow your uh, customer experience programs as well. Thanks, Helen. That was fantastic. And thanks to all of you for joining today. Tune in for the rest of Experience Week for more great content.